Diablo 4 somehow got worse and so did Blizzard. Here we go. People been wanting me to watch this. We're getting around to it. We're getting into it. Let's do well, it. Well, thank God we built you. What a blessing for the community. Do you understand that it is actually statistically harder for a team to be this consistently bad than it is for them to occasionally accidentally be good? The probability is staggering. Do you have any idea how low our expectations are? You are a I don't believe this because if he was a real sports fan, he'd be setting a car on fire. Oh, no, never mind. He watches, I think this is like football. It's not soccer. Never mind. Factory of sadness! So, are you willing to admit I was right about Diablo 4? Mm -hmm. I accept your apology. I tried to tell right. you guys. I, I tried to warn you. I warned you. I warned you. But, but did you listen to me? Oh, well, most of you did, but some of you didn't. People were very unhappy about Actman's video, the first video, because they said, you didn't even do World Tier 4. You don't know what you're talking about. And the game gets so much better. Uh-uh. Some of you he held right. on to hope. You poor fools. I was eager to see what Blizzard had planned for season one and how this new season would go over with fans who were still playing the game. Dozens what I fans. didn't expect is that Diablo 4 would get worse with the new season update. It would actually get so... I don't know. I mean, like, I played Blizzard games for a long time. I could have expected the game would have gotten worse. Like, I, I feel like that's not really that hard to imagine. Like, that happens all the time bad to the point where diehard fans who were defending it before the season have now completely uh -huh. given up on the game yep. what on god's green earth could have possibly occurred to what's bad about it is that people aren't watching it anymore like people aren't even going on the reddit as much people are just like yo like we tried way sentiment so radically but that's what we're gonna find out today let's run through some of the dumb scum i still think diablo 4 is a good game for casual andies i do i think it's a nice good game for sitting on the couch knocking back a couple of brews and you know maybe clearing out some goblins but in terms of it being like a long-term game for people to spend a lot of time on ooh. Me, shady backwards ass design decisions blizzard has made with diablo 4 this isn't for the faint of heart guys right because things are much worse than we could have possibly imagined whoopi goldberg has demanded a refund for blizzard because Smart. diablo 4 cannot be played on mac About i would have deserved deserved to ref said you need a refund for another reason but okay my favorite game diablo and suddenly now diablo 4 is not available to me on uh, on my apple computer this injustice cannot be allowed give me my apple 4 because i paid for it i was all excited for it i went to play Who the fuck uses an apple play on it and i'm telling you this really pissed me off yeah. tell me next time say we're done on apple but let me have the four let me play on the four because you made me so excited for it we are truly living in the worst timeline. Yep, Anyways, true. let's get on to the real stuff. As we all know, every game these days needs a battle pass, otherwise it's trash. Damn, so they really have a lot of these, huh? The Battlefield Battle Pass, that's cute. It rhymes. It's garbage, nobody's ever gonna play it. So naturally, Diablo 4 has one. This a lot- I didn't even claim the items out of my Battle Pass. I, I didn't. Why the fuck would I care? might make it a masterpiece in many people's like eyes however in most games with battle passes you expect to earn enough currency in that battle pass to purchase the next one yeah but the thing is that uh fortnite is a free game so logically the free game should wait what the free game has a better system than the one that you paid for Well, shit. It's kind of a nice reward for players who don't spend money, but- I've been in watching Summit play this game. I've thought about playing Halo again, man. I have. Invest the time so that they can get the premium Ooh. rewards in the next Try pass. Or, you know, you can use the currency to buy specific items, skins, emotes, whatever. They have crafted what is quite possibly the scummiest, dirtiest battle pass ever. If you complete the season one pass, you-
I don't even know if this one is that scummy. I just think it's another one. It's just another dick in the salad. Is it a particularly large dick? No, it's just another dick. You earn 666 Diablo fun bucks. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah, six, six, six. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, that's so cute. Uh, except you can't purchase fucking anything with 666 coins in Diablo 4. Man, you guys should really hire a fucking... How much does it cost to buy the battle pass in coins? How much does it be? 1,000? So if you buy a battle pass with 666 the second time, that would mean that you would have... 666 times 2, which would be, uh, let me just, I, I, like, sometimes I, I do it, sometimes I don't do it. Minus 1,000 plus 666. So you would be two platinum off of being able to buy a second battle pass in the third season. Ooh. You're just so close. It just, oh, you just, come on. Don't you want to spend just a little bit of money? Don't you want to just put in a couple of bucks? But if you do that and you don't buy the special pack, you're not getting a bonus. So you're losing money unless you buy the expensive pack. So what do you want to do? You want to lose money? Oh my fucking god. fourth grade math student because your math is awful this of course is the same scummy tactic microsoft used to use with xbox points before they I, I i'll have you know i have one of these little cards like glued to my wall xbox live gold membership Pitch that concept in 2013, a decade old. Yes, it is that outdated. That what Blizzard is doing right now. They create a currency, they create that currency's value, and then they make a fucked up conversion rate, so yeah. you never have exactly as many points as the thing you want to purchase. I will say it again, and I will say it again after I say it this time. There is no benefit to the consumer that prices are not always shown in the local denomination of the used currency. And in fact, the only purpose these secondary currencies provide is to obfuscate the true price of what you are paying. And I think that something that is fundamentally built off of obfuscation and confusing the customer should not be legal. There is no benefit to the customer that there are premium currencies in games that make it harder for you to understand what you're spending your money on. And if it was up to me, it would be fucking illegal because it is, it is, it is fundamentally deceptive. And I believe that you should not be able to actively deceive your customers. You should not be able to do that. Then do something about it. Or call up Ted Cruz. That is by design, so you will always feel the need to purchase more points. But Blizzard took it a step further than that. Oh boy, they have been thinking months and uh -huh. seasons ahead with how fucking scummy this is. Oh, is As gonna, one Reddit user points out, gonna, if you try to use- I fucking saw this, yes. I See, that's how I knew the numbers came out, because I read this fucking post whenever it was made. I read this fucking post, yep. Coins to only buy Here battle passes. Look at this math. With a price of 1,000 coins per battle pass, getting 666 coins means that on your second pass, you'll have 1,332. Great, you can get a battle pass and have 332 coins left over. However, on the this season so three cute. pass, Ooh. getting 666 coins means you will have 998, exactly Ooh. too short of getting another battle pass. Oh, this is wild so to me because close. even in Just call spend a little bit of money and you'll get it again. Call of Duty, they give you enough credits in the battle pass to buy the next one. Somehow, the battle pass gets worse though, because if you purchase the ultimate or deluxe edition of D4, well, it's safe to say you're probably a hardcore fan. You deserve yeah. a nice reward for spending that little 
extra bit of money. So they gave players a premium battle pass, one that Blizzard themselves said could be redeemed for any season. What's that? Maybe you don't like the current season gimmick of Malignant Hearts yeah. and all that? Oh, that's fine. You can redeem the pass later. However, if you scroll to the seasonal page, it will highlight the activate premium pass option. So if you hit A by- Uh, well, okay. So this is, all right, a little, well, let me actually let him finish and then I'll clarify after he explains it. Accident. Oops. Let's see if it counted. It's this dude. No! No! <laughs> No! no! I love how he tries to turn the game off. Bro, Bro, of all the things that you can't cancel, you bet your fucking ass buying the battle pass is one of them. If that thing activated... Did you make it crash or did the game actually just crash? The game actually just crashed. I hope it crashed and it Claus? didn't activate it. Like, if that's a one-click activation, fuck you, dude. It crashed, you didn't close it? I don't know what I expected. Yeah, it makes sense. Oh no, oh no! Fuck you! They ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it. You've just redeemed the battle pass. Oh! Well, so it was better. It was like basically on consoles. This was not the case on PC. We checked. But it was the case on consoles that there is something that is referred to as a dark pattern. And a dark pattern is whenever your cursor or your selector is automatically located on the button they want you to press. And the dark pattern of the Blizzard Battle Pass thing was to automatically put pre-watched. Oh, fuck. He says this. Okay, well, I'll just let him Boy, say. that's so unfortunate. All oh, right, what an... Okay. What a what a bad stroke of luck you just had. Tee hee. Looks like Blizzard Oops. just made a little fucky wucky with the battle pass in the yeah. UI. Is isn't that so cute? Yeah, it's cute how fucking desperate you are for people to keep playing this game. You have to resort to using dark patterns. Are there you fucking kidding me? What the fuck's wrong with you? How do your business practices continue to get more scummy? How do you get worse over time? It's kind of impressive to the point to where I want to see what they do next. One day we will get the announcement for Overwatch 3. And that will be a beautiful day. What is a dark pattern? A dark pattern is a UI that is specifically crafted to trick users yeah. into redeeming things, purchasing things that they otherwise wouldn't have, right? It's a UI without safeguards. When you click log out of RuneScape, it takes two clicks instead of one. Yeah. So you don't do that by mistake. This is the most basic fucking concept when it comes to user interface design, but it's surprisingly sure. missing in this game. Hmm. Well, it's not surprisingly missing. It's only missing with the battle pass. Now, Epic Games used the dark pattern in Fortnite that they ended up having to pay over $500 million for it. Yeah. $275 million to the FDC and $245 million to refund players that were tricked and duped into w. paying for things they otherwise wouldn't have. W, Obviously, this isn't w. as bad as what... Oh, uh, by the way, today also Apple lost a lawsuit and they owe $500 million to uh, people whose phones were intentionally slowed down due to planned obsolescence. I read about that today. And so uh, we've actually had a number of these consumer rights W's. This is awesome. Epic did, but it's the same intention. This this would be like if you hit the add to cart button on Amazon it and it just purchased it. it for you and yeah. refused a refund. Nope, nope. You click the one button, nope. You're stuck with it. Blizzard is also refusing refunds, right? This is what they said. Once claimed, a Diablo 4 battle pass cannot be revoked. Customer service is unable to assist with removing or reissuing already claimed passes. I don't know why they couldn't just... Uh... Well, I, I do know why. It's because it would cause them to lose money. What What am I thinking? Of course they could undo this, but no. No, of course they're not going to do that. Like, yeah. Yeah. What was... I'm, I'm so stupid. Go fuck yourself. The amount of predatory practices in Diablo 4 is so outrageous at this point, I'm surprised Chris Hansen hasn't shown up. You want to explain yourself? Um, it's not predatory. You already paid for the battle pass. Whoa, you wait, just whoa. accidentally quit it. Maybe read prompts on your screen. I mean, there's some truth to this, but 
It would be good if there was a confirm button, right? Like every single other online purchase. Clicked it. Uh, maybe read the prompts on your screen? Objection! Not predatory, you say? Accidentally clicked? It shouldn't be possible to misclick something like this. That's what the UI designers are for. That's what safeguards are for. Are you sure you- Well, keep in mind also, on consoles, the default, like, icon was selected on Redeem Battle Pass. So if you just press the menu, and pressed A, it would register the key press before you could even see what happened. So this is actually, that argument is actually not even true. Want to redeem the battle pass? Pressing button X dismantles the gear. Oh, Clearly. bro, he watched the video. Isn't enough to prevent him from doing it. And so we actually ended up adding a safety mechanism Remember, that you don't this. just have to tap a button to dismantle your gear and dust, and you have to press and hold the button. And the more valuable the piece of gear, the longer you have to hold it. This was such a good video. It. In their season of the malignant blog post, Blizzard says this. If you purchase the deluxe or ultimate edition of Diablo 4 and want to redeem your battle pass for this season, navigate to the season section of the shop and select the option to activate your battle pass. If it ain't predatory, where's the fucking option? This is one of the scummiest things I've ever seen Blizzard try to pull. No, it's not. It, it, it's, it's really not. I mean, they've done way worse stuff. Like, the Overwatch thing was way worse than this. Like, increasing the prices of BlizzCon tickets to, like, $900 was, like, fucking insane. Uh, let's see. Diablo Immortal... I would say this is in the top 10, but I don't know if it's in the top five. I mean, you've got to keep in mind, like, there were some really bad ones. Oh, the AWC money. Yes, that was so big. Oh, my God. Actman's in chat. Actman, did you hear about this? The AWC money? This is a Warcraft drama, so I, I bet you might not have heard of this. No, I did not. Well. Wow. So Blizzard puts out a toy, and this toy is supposed to be an item that you buy to support the players of the AWC, the Arena World Cup, that's the PvP tournament, and also the MDI, Mythic Dungeon Invitational, the PvE Dungeon Tournament. And players said, er, and everybody, Blizzard said, that this money would go to the players, and it went to the players at a rate of 25%. 75% went to the company, which I sheepishly fucking defended because that's the same percentage that Dota takes for their, their contribution packages. I said, you know what? That's fine. This is industry standard. I'll let it happen because at least Blizzard is trying something. Well, Blizzard did try something. And what Blizzard did is they announced before BlizzCon, just a little bit before then, that actually the prize pool was only going to be the $600,000 because now that the players had spent so much money on the fan funding, Blizzard wouldn't have to provide their own funding because the players did it for them. So the money that Blizzard said that they were going to put up for the tournament, well, they don't have to do that anymore because the players already spent it. I swear to fucking God. Shout out to Snuts. What the fucking shit? Yes, and this wasn't even like, it was a WoW thing. And like, nobody cared at the time because Classic WoW was so popular. People were like, retail Lamau, who cares? Like, that's what they get for playing retail. But like, they, I remember Snuts came up with this. He talked about it. And I remember I was, I was reading about this. I think I even interviewed Snuts while I was getting boosted in BRD. It was one of the worst things that Blizzard has done. And they profited from it as well. Yes, and they're still selling the toys now. As far as I know, I think they're still selling them now. Oh, dude. <laughs> it, was, it was a real situation. 600k. Yep, there it is. What's worse than that? I think Overwatch 2 is the worst one.
But once you start viewing Blizzard's decisions with Diablo 4 through the lens of maximizing player retention and revenue, then everything falls into place. Actually, it all makes sense. So if you were a product person, yep. you couldn't change the course of that company very much. So who influenced the success of PepsiCo? The sales and marketing people. Therefore, they were the ones that got promoted and therefore they were the ones that ran the company. It turns out the same thing can happen in technology companies. So the people that can make the company more successful are sales and marketing people. And they end yep. up running the companies. And the product people get driven out of the decision-making forums. And Where, yeah, where's Jeff Kaplan? Oh, it's this guy. <laughs> this guy says I'm a psychopath because I said Arthas did nothing wrong, which I still I still think he's completely fucking delusional about, right? But he is right about this. He's about this. I've seen this clip before. He's and right later about we this. find out that they had dramatically slashed the budget for Warcraft 3 Reforged to almost nothing. And it's pretty clear to me that it came from the top, maybe even Kotick directly. They top screwed game. the game that we all wanted to see for money because they thought there was no money in this. And the companies forget yeah. what it means to make great products. Have you ever thought about adding servers for previous expansions as they were then? No. And by the way, you don't want to, that, to do that either. You think you do, but you don't. And sort of the product Man. sensibility and the, the product genius that brought them to those. Well, to be fair, I mean, J. Allen Brack was always kind of an idiot. Like, he was. He was always kind of an idiot. So, I mean, it's not... I, I mean, I don't want to think, like, this guy was not some kind of genius for sales either. He's just an idiot. To that monopolistic position. Gets rotted out. Remember whenever he took over and, like, his hair went gray in a year? Jesus. By people running these companies who have no conception of a good product versus a bad product. That was bad. We want to use mobile devices as the platform for a new you know what i used to fucking defend wyatt chang here i used to defend him and to be fair he makes some really nice youtube videos but that bullshit this dude pulled about how diablo immortal you can't buy gear was so fucking deceptive it made me mad. And I was like, oh, they put him up here as a sacrificial lamb, to, and, and he had to announce this. They knew it was going to go bad, and they said, Wyatt, you got to do it anyway. Fuck you, right? But you know what? That shit you pulled with Diablo Immortal, this is what you goddamn deserve. Diablo. You get they have you no conception deserve. of the craftsmanship that's required to take a good idea and turn it into a good product. And they really have no feeling in their hearts, usually, about wanting to really help the customers. So, my theory is Blizzard yeah. new players weren't going to react well to some of the changes they made in the patch. So, to keep some hardcore players yes, invested, they used the dark pattern to trick them into redeeming the battle pass. Right. Oh, shit. And, oh, and, and by the way, I can actually totally believe that Blizzard did this on accident. I, I can actually believe that. Because in every single way that they explain why coding for Diablo 4 works this way, I actually think that they could be that dumb. I do it. I, I, I genuinely believe it is possible that they could have fucked up on that level and before you say oh there's no way remember that you are loading every item in every player's stash tab whenever you join the city just remember that they don't make any money from that they're just dumb fuck I was trying to click Season Journey. Like the first time I got in a Legendary in an internal build, I did this. I accidentally dismantled it because we didn't have any safeguards. And I was so angry. I was ready to go over and punch somebody on the UI team. Well, I guess I have the fucking- Yeah, that guy worked at Blizzard, but he got fired, so that problem happened again. In Battle Pass now. God damn it. That is fucking sneaky, dude. Yeah. Oh, that pisses me off so much. I might as well claim all my fucking rewards. Yeah. You might as well re- <laughs> 
redeem those rewards, you might as well grind out the rest of the battle pass. Because oopsie doopsie, looks like you redeemed it, fella. Yeah, Better keep idiot. playing Diablo 4. Don't ever stop. Don't ever stop playing this game ever for any reason. Keep playing. Keep Old Blizzard is dead. And if you're like me, it's time you finally realize that. Well, <laughs> Blizzard is oh, here dead. Here we go. It is a corpse. It is a corpse being puppeteered by Activision. And maybe uh, this is the reason why he was so unhappy that I said Arthas did nothing wrong is because Arthas was the leader of the Scourge and the Scourge reminded him of Blizzard. Uh, Bobby Kotick. And it's going to be used as basically a factory to put the Blizzard stamp on things and stoke nostalgia to get sales. And that's it. They really did do that. That's it. Running out of storage space is an issue that 100% of all Diablo 4 players will run into at some point. Yep. So naturally, <laughs> the new season introduces a mandatory item that takes up more inventory space. And it doesn't just take up a little bit of inventory space, it takes up a lot. It exacerbates the issue even further. The Diablo and it doesn't go in your questing tab where nothing else goes, oh no. Well, fans have have universally praised the presence of malignant. Oh, also, um, this was bugged, by the way, and you could infinitely farm the wrathful hearts, like that were supposed to be like super rare. You could infinitely farm them just by resetting the last quest. I did it like fifty times. I have every wrathful heart that I could ever need hearts in in the normal inventory slot i have not heard a single person oh, criticize also like a compounding problem that this creates is that it makes every single item that you get effectively 1.5 times harder in order to achieve best in slot because now you have a fifth stat that you have to match which is the color correct uh the color correct uh, malignant heart color because you can avoid one color because you can put a wrathful in any color but then you do have to have one color correct one isn't that cute size this at all the lack of a gem tab has been universally praised by all diablo fans so you guys remember how people were complaining over the fact that gems took up too much stash space blizzard yeah. fixed that problem you want to know how they fixed that problem? I can guarantee you that almost nobody's going to be complaining about bag space because of gems. Because your bags are going to be filled with fucking malignant hearts. Holy crap. But look at this shit. This is like three dungeons. I'm not exaggerating. This is three malignant dungeons worth of items. Are you kidding me? If this No, they're not kidding. This is for your own good company gave even a molecule of a shit about the fans, about providing the best yeah. experience for those fans. Limited stash wouldn't even be something we're talking about. But why? Why is the stash space such a contentious issue? Well, it's the same reason they made teleport cost two seconds longer. Blizzard is trying to milk every single microsecond of playtime out of you. The less storage you have, the more time you spend micromanaging your inventory. Look at my stash. I, I, I don't... Okay. I would have believed that, but I actually think that they couldn't figure it out because of the lag. And I think that's even sadder. Because at least if it was a malicious plan, somebody in the company is smart enough to have a malicious plan. And whenever you use the word malicious plan, inside of that term does exist the word plan. Which is slightly reassuring, right? But in fact... Oh, in fact... Whatever, I guess we're supposed to spend even more time fucking around with our stashes. Blizzard, can you just cut the shit? Why are you playing stupid fucking games with me and the rest of the Diablo fan base? Why are you wasting your time trying to trick me and the rest of us into playing this game? Have you ever thought about making a good video game? No! And the game is so fun, I want to keep playing it? Whoa! Radical concept, bro! That's fucking crazy! That has a People spine. don't play video games because they're fun anymore. What?
What is that nonsense? Enough nickel and diming us of our precious time. Just make a good video game. How is this such a radical concept? I need to, dude, every time I see this, man, I need to play Diablo 2. I have to fucking play it. Oh my god. Quality of life. What does that mean? I have no idea. But now because of Blizzard's dog shit game design, players have to figure out their own workarounds for this. They have to create mule characters to hold more inventory. Either that or you just have to say screw it and get rid of the items I'm you don't want to. I'm three. actually to the point where I'm going to have to start getting rid of perfect powers that are actually valuable. In Diablo 3, when you would complete a season journey, it would give you an extra tab. Can we get one or two or ten for completing it, please? People shouldn't have no, to- No, how could they possibly do that? Because you have to understand that Path of Exile does that. But... Oh wait, no, Path of Exile is free. Oh. Huh. It makes you think. Really makes you think. Ask for a scoreboard in Battlefield games. They shouldn't have to ask for a Slayer playlist in Halo. And they shouldn't have to ask for adequate storage space in a game that is all about collecting fucking loot. And the worst part, there's not a Slayer playlist in Halo? Wait, this is, is this a joke on release? No. It's like all Microsoft needs to do is buy Ubisoft and buy EA, and they will have completed the infinity gauntlet of studios that consistently under-deliver. They can snap their fingers <laughs> and make a battle pass out of nothing. Snap their fingers and remove the half the content out of a game and put it into a battle pass. This is by design. This is intentional. Blizzard did uh, use its community managers to soak up the sniper bullets fired from upset fans and oh, force yeah. those community managers to give some dumbass excuse that is so stupid it would have been better if they completely ignored this and didn't even mention it. When you see another player in game, you load them and their entire stash filled with all their eyes. You know Joseph Pipiora got fucking... They were probably so mad at him internally. <laughs> They're like, you shouldn't have told them that. Why did you tell them this? Now we look like idiots! This is no different than when 343 said they couldn't add a Slayer playlist to Halo Infinite because of- Oh, UI limitations with the game right now in the way and number of playlists that are exposed. Now, I don't want to get biblical and religious, but I felt the exact same way about, like, God and original sin. What do you mean you can't get rid of it? You did it. What do you mean you have to, oh, oh, what do you mean? You made the system. Like, what do you mean we have to go have another guy get crucified for this? Why don't you just change the fucking system? Isn't this your fault for programming it this way? Is it the UI problem, a problem that you designed? UI limitations, it's like, but, but you designed the game yes, this way. Yes, that's right. You designed these limitations. Yes. No other online RPG I've ever played has ever had these issues. How the fuck does RuneScape- Uh, has any other online RPG had these issues? I'm sure there's probably one of them. Nobody plays it anymore, though. Okay, work. What kind- New World. New World has these issues. What a great frame of reference. See? Yeah, New World had these problems. Come on! I know wizardry is that? My bank? Look at all these slots I have in my bank. How the wow. hell does this game load wow. this for, for every other player in the server? That is just insane, dude. Ha tide goes in, tide goes out. Can't explain you that. You can't explain that. How the hell did you guys get WoW to work? How did you, how did you possibly... They don't even know. They don't know how they got it to work. They accidentally got classic WoW to work because uh, Omar just figured it out.
Because before then, nobody even knew how to make the game work. Man, is that that is the greatest technical achievement in Almost modern human history. Anymore, okay, so way. he's also saying that if Very we sad. weren't forced to load other players and their stash inventory, right? Okay, run with me on this. If we weren't forced to do that, we could have a bigger stash. Oh, shit. Oh, no. What's that? Diablo uh -oh. 4 is an always online video game? Yep. Gosh. What? Disconnect. You know what that means? You just lost your character. <laughs> Somebody's going to the Hall of Heroes. What a what a terrible coincidence. If only there was a way to make video games playable without an internet connection, but just technology hasn't gotten to that point yet. No. Hopefully someday. Oh wait, technology we'll has caught up to that point because in the Bells Above mod for Diablo 1, you get 50 tabs of storage right off the bat. If you can pick it up, you can store it. That's the philosophy Diablo games need to have. The Bells Above mod yep. uh, apparently was also made by one guy one guy yeah but like you can't expect blizzard because there's so many people that work there and they have to get approval for everything that they do and then they have to have a meeting for if the approval should be given so like you can't expect a hundred people to be able to do something as fast as one person right i mean come on managed to accomplish what 9,000 people at Blizzard couldn't. Over 9,000 people? Is there even 9,000 items? Couldn't. This is what teams are working diligently to improve so that we can have more stash ASAP. Gee, if only you guys worked diligently on this in the six years of fucking development time you had. Yep. Oh man, were you guys snorting coke in the bathroom and stealing <laughs> the female employee's breast milk again? Huh? Were you doing that? It's too bad there was not a single brain cell amongst the 9,000 employees who worked on Diablo 4, oh, and not one of them thought to bring up the issue of limited storage space in an RPG about collecting loot. Well, you could see how this would happen because we watched the developers play the game. And if we watched the developers play the game, they didn't pick up any loot. So actually it's probably not an issue. As I said, the best insight into why a game is good or bad, all you have to do is watch the developers play it. PoE 2. There's 90 new bosses, and we're going to have a dev, which, by the way, doing it in front of, like, 300,000 people live is pretty stressful. And he died a couple of times. But he fucking killed it. And you know what? Remember the Final Fantasy? Yeah, the Devil May Cry guy for Final Fantasy 16. He just showed up. He's like, all right, yeah, I'll beat it. It's no big deal. And he even, by the way... If nobody watched that, he actually held his damage way longer than he had to just so he could kill the boss while it was staggered while he was in limit break by using the Ramua ultimate attack as his final attack for combat. He actually could have beaten it way easier, but he didn't do that. Yet yeah, Yoshi P, who's the developer of Final Fantasy XIV, has a level 90 of every class, and his main is the hardest class to play, which is the Black Mage. Not one. You expect me to believe you hired fucking vegetables to make this game? Well, yeah. Yeah, I believe that. Yep. No. Obviously, that idea is so outlandish, it can't possibly be true. So the real reason the stash is so limited is by intention. And then they say they're, they're gonna try to introduce a gem tab in later seasons. It's gonna take time. Why are you guys so efficient? Why do you guys work like a well-oiled machine? I wonder what works faster. A local government trying to fix a road or Blizzard Entertainment? Because I think both of them is a problem you can solve in one day that takes 18 months. When you're making the game worse, but when it comes it's to- It's like a black hole. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> time and money. You just put it in and it just... Where'd it go? Well, you know. Like easy, no brainer fixes. It's like, bro, bro, give me, give me six months for that, man. That's a tall order. Gem tab? Are yeah. you crazy? We can't, we can't just throw that together in six years. Come no. on, man. <laughs> just, uh, 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 maybe buy some uh, uh, items in the store. Maybe, maybe we'll work faster. <laughs> this is something that is clearly obvious has been addressed since day one, Blizzard saying they know this needs to happen, but now we're saying that a gem tab isn't gonna be there until season two, maybe season three. Well, I'm surprised it's coming out in season two, guys. I'm gonna be real. I think they've got a lot of things planned for season two, and the way things are looking, I feel like we're not gonna get them all. Because like, if they've got so many things coming out in season two, that's gonna be like an overload. So, like, they're going to have to move some things back to Season 3. Now, they'll probably be ready by Season 2, but for some reason, they're going to get delayed. I guarantee you, there's going to be some problem. What the fuck is this? Oh, I got one. Oh, great. I thought I didn't have one of these. I got these Dr. Peppers with real, uh, real sugar. They're, they're really good. So, if you want diabetes, this is where to go. Okay, here we go. Like, it, it, it just can't take six months to add a gem tab. Not You're when you right, have- It's eight, gonna be longer. 800 million in revenue, but there's things like this uh -huh. that are just taking too long. I mean, this is 2023. There's thousands of games. You can't take a year to add a gem tab. If you're if you're a- Oh, you think that you can't? We'll see. We'll see, that's... and then you're gonna have the dads on the Reddit what man gamers these days i tell you something i'm level 47 and i'm having a blast what the hell are people complaining about i play the game three hours every four months it's great it's the same as with new world remember that oh people are complaining about the end game well i'm fishing so it's fine Slowly, you're dead, you're gone, it's over. So in my Diablo 4 review, I talked about how dumb and boring the stats and itemization are. Jesus Christ, I did not do it justice. I did not even scratch oh, the- Oh, he's gonna, he, I know he's about to show the list. He's gonna show the fucking list, I know it. Pip of the penis on how bad and maliciously designed Diablo 4's loot is. Okay, you wanna see how crazy it is? I fucking knew it, there it is. Wow, that's a lot of words. Too bad I'm not reading them. Holy fucking yep. shit. Look I at all it. these affixes. This section alone is just for calculating damage. Look at this now. Oh, yeah, yeah. By the way, you also have, like, uh, let me see if I can look at this. Uh, yeah, you have, like, percentage added. There's a lot of these that are not included, like, uh... For example, necromancers have a lot of really useless stats that they can get that nobody wants. Like, uh, minions inherit a percentage of your thorns. Nobody wants this. But it's there. Look at this nonsense. <laughs> damage while shapeshifted. Damage while werebear. Damage while werewolf. Damage with werebear. Damage with werewolf. Oh. Hey, genius, how about you simplify all that into one that says damage while shapeshifted? Hmm? Yeah. You could do that and it'd work perfectly. Yeah. Damage versus frozen, damage versus dazed, damage versus immobilized, versus knockdown, stunned, trapped, slowed, tripped. How about damage versus crowd controlled? I no. think they should have like daily damage. So like damage while Tuesday, damage while Saturday, weekend damage, weekday damage. Maybe paladins will do extra damage on Sunday whenever they put them in the game. No, oh, that's too simple act, man. This is artificial complexity at its most obvious and absurd. I have never seen such an asinine method of calculating damage in any other RPG in my lifetime. So the obvious question, yeah, once again, really why is it designed this way? Well, if you've been paying attention, you should know the answer already. I'll sum it up for you in one Reddit comment. I feel like I spend more time looking at gear than playing.
That is mission accomplished by Blizzard. That was their exact intention. That is why there are so many affixes and pointless niche modifiers that you don't give a shit about. Yep. So you spend more time looking at the loot, more time grinding gold, so you can spend more time re-rolling those affixes that you actually want. It's no different than what they do with loot boxes. They put a bunch of dumb shit you don't care about in the loot boxes to elevate the stuff you do care about, to dilute the odds. This right, you want to have like the the male characters so whenever you get the gotcha five star anime waifu you feel like a winner absolutely this is not good design this is not fun Lost it's not accessories oh yeah interesting or satisfying but again remember what i said if you try to understand the logic of blizzard's decisions and approach these things as if they are trying to make a good game you're going to be confused none of this is going to make any sense to you because you have the misconception that Blizzard is making Diablo 4 to be a good video game. So how do you go about actually advancing this season journey? You check out your objectives and you do things like, oh, collect Gallo Vine, craft the chip gem. You're actually making me go out of my way to craft the gem. Like at this point, you're just telling me, do this thing because I fucking told you to do it and you're gonna do it because you're a bitch. Change your gear's appearance at the wardrobe. I've never changed my transmog one time in Diablo. I've never done it. Why is this an objective? Just go to your wardrobe, change. This is literally just a list of fucking chores, dude. You have to look at yes. Diablo 4 from the perspective of a morally compromised businessman whose only objective is to keep you playing longer. Well, a morally compromised businessman who is the ringleader of a bunch of people that don't know how to play the game they've been working on it for five years no they don't know how to play it what's their favorite class they like them all oh okay of course they do and they will pull out every dirty trick in the book to achieve that yeah interact with 10 waypoints oh now you know why they purposely removed your waypoints that you had in the eternal realm good fucking point very good fucking point. I never thought of that. So that they can then make it an objective for you to go back and collect them again! <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? And by the way, do remember, their original plan was to have you to collect all of the altars of Lilith again? This was their original plan? This is what they had planned? Well, I didn't need 30 damage affixes to play D2 for 12 years. Yeah. Don't you think that having a good system will more likely retain players than artificially prolonging the game? What you say is heresy. You think you can just make a fun video game and people will play it for no other reason than that? No, look at Baldur's Gate. Nobody's playing that game. That is not what the data says. That yeah. is nonsense. Baldur's Gate 3 and Elden Ring. What a great example. Thoroughly disprove this idea. This is why I'm so worked up, okay? Blizzard has zero fucking respect for your time as a player. And therefore, you should give them that same level of respect. Fucking zero. Damage with frost. Damage with cold. Jesus. Damage to chilled. Good one. You guys forgot about that. Damage with ice. Bro. Say psych right now, dude. So with that being said, here's another million dollar question that only people with an IQ of above 160 can get right. Why did the preseason patch nerf damage across the board? So it takes longer. The only question needs to be asked in the campfire chat. Please explain why you believe the game is more fun after the changes than before. Why? Cause shut your fucking mouth. That's why. Shut the fuck up, turn your brain off and keep playing. Don't ever stop playing. Don't ever stop playing Diablo 4 for any- We want to, you know, obviously acknowledge everyone's feedback in regards to yeah. uh, reducing player power. Uh, we know it is bad. We know it is not fun. Can you ask the dev team why they hate me so much as well as other sorcerers? Again, you see Yeah, this I was wondering about that because sorcerer was so fun to play in the beta. What the hell happened? Same type of bewilderment from all the Diablo fans who are under this misconception that Blizzard is trying to make a good video game for them. They can't make sense of why the game is getting worse, mm -hmm. more tedious, and boring. 
Some of the nerfs they made are such an oxymoron. I have trouble believing this is not a, a, an inside joke, like an ironic comedy of errors. Cooldown reduction often felt mandatory due to the raw power. We imagine cooldown reduction. This is this was the worst change, by the way, because having CDR feels good. Like that's always one of the best feeling things because you can hit your buttons more. Reduction will remain a highly desirable stat but the penalty for not prioritizing it won't be as harsh. This stat is highly desirable by every single build, therefore we're making it worse, which in turn makes it even more desirable. This is the yeah. path we chose. That's the thing, that's what was so funny about this, is like, I agreed that vulnerability as the end-all be-all stat was bad. And I think CDR is just like the mandatory stat for every build, for every class is also bad. But making it slightly worse while it still maintains a 50% advantage above everything else doesn't even solve the problem. It just makes solving the problem that you already solved feel worse. ...instead of buffing other builds. But that's how Diablo 4 has gotten worse. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. I'm gonna be limiting the comments to just 100 comments, so, uh... See, because when you click this video, it has to load all the other yeah. comments of everybody else who's... Yeah, you don't want to have, like, people run out of internet. ...one, so I'm gonna limit that to 100, yeah. okay? All right, it, thank you. know, like, because on his phone, probably, like, if he has to load over 100 comments... It'll uh, overheat the phone. And it'll turn off. <laughs> so we gotta turn. We gotta stop that from happening. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, and subscribe to the Act Man for more awesome content. All right, everyone. That's all I got for today. This is the Act Man signing out. Peace. Man. So stop holding oh, out shit. hope that Blizzard is gonna come back. Oh, God. Everyone who founded all Blizzard, the all the principles that Blizzard was founded on, oh, God. they're gone or they're dead. They've been desecrated. So let Blizzard go. That's my main message is let Blizzard go. Appreciate what was created back when it was done and stop holding out hope that it's going to come back because it's, it's not. Jesus. Jesus. Who's that guy? Oh, he was the developer on Warcraft 3. Yep, he was the developer on Warcraft 3. Yeah, there's a video right there. It's an Ackman video. I know I haven't had a chance to watch this. Make sure to give it a like. This was a really good video. This was very entertaining. I liked it a lot. You got to admit, Blizzard really nailed the immersion because it really makes you feel like you're in hell. Well, the funny thing about that is that none of the Nightmare Dungeons are even in hell. Did you guys ever think about that? It's not even ever in there. Ashman wants to jump in voice chat. Yeah, I know. I just DM'd him. Yeah. Uh, I, bro, I, I messaged you on Discord if you're still listening. Yo. Yo, what's up, man? How you doing? Doing fantastic. Did you like the video? I fucking loved it, man. Like, uh, you love to hear it, dude. It is. It's one of those things where it's like, especially like that guy at the end, man. Stop. It's just so depressing. Dude, I I know, like, because you're even older than me. So you, uh, yeah. you have probably had more experience with Blizzard than I have. But like yeah. the first Blizzard game that I played was Warcraft 2. Same. And actually, like, yeah, I... Same. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, but like the the funny thing about Warcraft 2 and like Blizzard games is I could go up to my mom and be like, yes, me lord, and yeah. she would know exactly what I'm talking about because she heard that shit all the time. Do you remember the book? The Warcraft 2 book? Book? Yes, yeah, so like so whenever you bought the game, the <sighs> game manual. Oh man, I uh, yes. <laughs> I was but a wee lad at that yeah. point. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> like I remember looking through it, reading all the stuff about the different characters, looking at the pictures, like the actual Metzen artwork and everything. I don't know what happened, man. Like it's just that. Well, actually, <laughs> nothing happened. Nothing has changed because look at Baldur's Gate three. Look at Elden Ring. Nothing has changed. It's not like you can't make a game like this anymore. You can't. You know what's what's really funny? Uh, I've been putting together... Also, hi chat. Love you chat. You guys are fucking awesome, by the way. But uh, I've been putting together a video about like the whole Baldur's Gate 3 raises an unrealistic standard. Oh, and there's God, like some... Yeah. There's like some tweets that have been like, Oh, this team with 400 plus developers and six years of... Uh, development time and all this funding and 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 this game is just such an unrealistic standard and I was like, you know 
I feel like I just got done talking about another game that had six years in development and yeah, 9,000 exactly. people working on it's like it. A one -to -one. And well, nobody's saying Diablo 4 is like an unrealistic standard. Why is that? Why is that? Larian has a fucking fraction of that team. Why is that? Hmm? And a fraction of the resources and a fraction of the IP. I mean, Diablo is a much bigger IP than Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate's big, but Diablo is massive. I don't even know if Baldur's Gate is big because like when I was thinking about it, I was like, okay, the last actual Baldur's Gate game I can remember like off the top of my head is 2004 Baldur's yeah. Gate Dark Alliance 2 for the original Xbox. I played that with my friends. It was fucking awesome. But like, mm -hmm. you know, people try to assign this like huge value to the Dungeons and Dragons IP, but that's like an IP that's more renowned for its tabletop game not its video games well also you know? like there were other games that have used the dungeons and dragons ip since then and they weren't massively successful so the idea yeah. that the dungeons and dragons and i don't even IP, know what they're called yeah yeah because like i remember i looked at <laughs> i looked at one but it had like 125 players yeah oh, r.i.p which makes it even more impressive how successful baldur's gate 3 has been yeah Oh. Chat, can you can you guys believe that this guy hasn't played it yet? Oh fuck! Can oh, you believe fuck. that? <laughs> I Come know. on, you knew I was gonna throw you under the bus, I know. dude. I know. I, I dude, I, your I your viewers are gonna fucking game. love that. Your I, viewers I have, are gonna fucking love it. I know they will. And I farmed like fifteen videos about Baldur's Gate three. I haven't even played the fucking game. The top oh my post on God. my Reddit is about that. It's so bad. Like, it's actually embarrassing. Kind of. Yeah. This fucking guy. Okay. Also, also, chat. Perhaps the greatest sin is that this man has not beaten Diablo one or Diablo two. So, I therefore, was, yeah. is he truly a man? Is he even a man? So I was watching. I didn't know Diablo one looked so good. That is that is partially the Beelzebub mod. That's okay. That's what I'm saying. If I, yeah. If I'm gonna, uh, I have been working on a Diablo one review and like I've been trying to work. I want you to to have a part in that if you're willing. I am Be down. Quick part. Like, as I said, I had like the stuff with my dad and everything, but as long yeah. as I can record and something, I'm down to do it. Yeah, yeah. If you can, that would be great. If not, no pressure. Uh, I'm honestly really sad to hear about that. I appreciate it, man. You know? Yeah, it is what it is. No, I mean, I mean, I mean family family is more important than whatever the fuck we're doing on this on these websites. As always. Honestly. Yeah. But um uh quick quick cameo, it could be pretty funny, but I've been working really hard on this like Diablo 1 review and and I I want to watch you play through it. I want to watch you play through the bells above mod. Yeah, there's a couple things that are really cool about it. One thing is that like, uh, like seventy percent of Diablo 2's story was figured out in the first game, and they also like okay. There, there's a bunch of cut quests from the first game where they mention like Belial and Osmodon, you know, characters that don't even show up until Diablo three. Like oh, what? Wow. Fucking six. Yeah, sixteen years later. They had these characters already figured out in the first game in 1997. It's kind of fucking... Yeah, uh, uh, Osmodon. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, I always <laughs> wondered about that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're apparently mentioned in the books as well. Yeah, I, I didn't even know that. I thought that, like, originally Diablo was, like, you know, Gauntlet or something like that, right? There wasn't really any lore to it, but apparently it was all fleshed out even then, which is still kind of It impressive. was. Yeah, and in the in the Belzebub mod, it's like a you know, it's kind of like the Kotor two restored content mod where they yeah. restored basically what the original vision was. So Andariel is like a villain that you normally would only meet in Diablo two right. and later in Diablo four, but she was actually planned for the first game. So there's a quest that they restored where you fight her in the first game, which is really fucking cool. Chat, did you guys know about that? Mm? Was mm? there a character model for Andariel in the game files, or was it made by the mod creators? Yep, it was. I believe I believe it was made by the creators. Oh, I wow. could be wrong. Okay. There might have been there might have been like some text. Well, there was like some uh, audio recordings for like the quest itself. Yeah. You know, so like the the characters in the town had all these dialogues and 
maybe the the mod guy you know crafted it around that i'm yeah. not entirely sure but i i feel like that would have been a pretty hefty task i mean because I, I mean originally i didn't andario originally have uh wasn't she originally topless and then they put they made her wear a shirt in the resurrected game is that true i i, I don't know but if original. that's true that's that's one of the greatest tragedies in in gaming history More am i right fellas? <laughs> what did you think about the story of diablo 4 did you finish you finished the campaign right oh yeah of course yeah. of course i i thought it was really strong okay. right off the bat off the bat the but first, as time went the on first hour was fucking amazing i love that first hour. yeah it was so good dude what when you encounter Lorath for the first time and he walks into the house with like the the deer corpse yeah, around his shoulder yeah. and he's like if you're gonna break into a man's house you might as well stay for dinner yeah. or whatever he says and i was like "Fuck yeah i'm so down with this game i'm 100 percent down after that line of dialogue and then it just kind of like got worse after that i feel like uh there were some high points but there were also a lot of uh unnecessary points a lot of boring points too like yeah uh, yeah uh, it was weird i'll say this asman uh you can kick me out of here at any time by the way i don't want to be a bother okay. to you or or your chat or anything so okay. just let me know if you want me out of here at any point uh all good do you but, stay up um, late as well i do okay, i do good. yeah smart it's 2 a.m over here you're in texas man what are you doing i don't know I'm not even done. Yeah, I'm not done with the stream yet. Either, You're not so. even done, man. <laughs> Gotta yeah. keep trekking along. Well, usually I just no, but, when I go um, to bed whenever the sun comes up. Yeah. 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 But I, let me let me tell you about this. Let me ask okay. you about this. Um, did you play like StarCraft II's campaigns? Yes, I played the first one. I did not play the two expansions. I will forgive this transgression, yeah. but but what I will say about like Blizzard storytelling is that something I kind of noticed is that the the high budget cutscenes mm -hmm. almost feel like they're they're taking place of something that would have been like the real story, like it's almost a replacement for the real story, and it's trying to be like more of a spectacle than a story. Does that make sense? Not entirely. How do you mean? Can you give me an example? I, I, I mean, like, so in the original StarCraft and Brood War, they had all this yeah. political intrigue and, like, talks of betrayal and, like, oh, you betrayed me. Fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah, oh, like you're killing is, my best friend. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Kerrigan killing Raynor, or sorry, Kerrigan killing Phoenix and then Raynor getting yeah. pissed off. But then in like StarCraft 2 and the expansions, the cutscenes are much more like spectacle oriented. You, they they <laughs> show you just like these big cutscenes of like the Zerg attacking cities. And, you know, it's like, does that make sense? It, it, it's so almost kind I of noticed, more Hollywood-esque. Yeah. I noticed this a lot with the Diablo 2 cutscenes is that they remastered. And I honestly think everything they did with Diablo 2 Resurrected, I played like a couple of hours of it. And like everything I've heard about it, all the cinematics and everything, it looks like a, it feels like a authentic recreation, right? It's not like a Warcraft 3. <laughs> well, how would you know? You never played through it. Aha, uh -huh, well, that's what I've heard. <laughs> and also it looked good too. It looked the same. Dude. <laughs> eh. Dude, Blizzard has always been good about cutscenes, but keep going. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. Well, what I was saying is like Diablo 2's cutscenes, it was astonishing to me like how just like absolutely bleak and fatalistic they were. It was amazing. It was like the difference between watching a modern fantasy movie and going back and watching the original Conan the Barbarian. Yes. Yeah. It, it it's it's almost like watching Game of Thrones season one through four and then swapping to oh, like season seven and eight. Yeah. You know what I mean? The dick jokes. Like, well, not even the dick jokes. It's just like the substance of it. Like there's there's like a real story that's trying to be told, and you know the two uh, pre-rendered cutscenes they have in Diablo Four, they're really really good. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, they're really fucking well presented. But like when I watch the ending of Diablo 4 in that cutscene, I'm just kind of like, 
what is happening you know what is going on like this is really cool but i don't i don't feel like an emotional connection to this the same way i did when when marius is like uh, fucking realizing that he's a dead man you know at the end of d2 yeah. spoilers by the way it's not personal right it, it's not as, yeah 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 it's not as raw and it's just like and that's what i liked about it is like there was no real reason why marius followed the guy oh why does the wind blow and it was just like yeah you don't need a divine reason for why this is happening it's oh, happening uh, because dude. it's happening I, i've oh dude i that's the thing that makes me want to like recreate those scenes but in my yeah. own like corny cheesy way you yeah. know like i just i'm just memorize the dialogue you know yeah why did i follow him i don't know yeah why do things happen as they do in dreams yeah. like that's such a good yeah. fucking line like why do things happen as they do in dreams yeah you could th you could ponder that question for like an hour and it's just it's so bleak and it's just like and also there weren't like a million npcs like i think that like you made this point in the first video that like in diablo 2 every single npc or i think it was diablo 1 maybe every single npc had a role to play it mattered in a way and in diablo 4 i think that i recognize like maybe five npcs that's about it like there, there's yeah no i kind of to the characters yeah i kind of got to that point like i i got to that point in diablo 4 where i was like wait a minute i can't i can't even name a single like blacksmith or you know yeah. ring jewel or jeweler or i can't name any nbc aside from the ones that are in the main story that seems like kind of a problem if this is a massive open world game that i'm supposed to feel invested in did you go and back, then i did you go back and play any more of diablo 4 after you took a break from the game whenever you made the first video uh no so you haven't no. even seen world to your four no i will like to let don't... you know that you're not missing out on anything it's funny you know. how often i've heard that i i hear people yeah. say like oh you you haven't played world tier four well you don't have a right to criticize the game and then those like same colleagues of people are like yeah world tier four fucking sucks <laughs> <laughs> you know this game fucking sucks in the end yeah. game and it's like dude you're not selling me on the game you're not selling me on this well that's the best thing is like i think that diablo 4 is a great game for casual players like casual dads with three wives nine kids and five jobs definitely a good game but like as a hardcore like arpg player i just can't see somebody continuously playing this game and like if you look at the twitch viewership it has gone down so fucking much it's actually insane how much it's gone down well you know what you know what's kind of funny is that um so i have a couple buddies uh like real life buddies who i've known since like elementary school and and they're like what you and i would probably refer to as more casual gamers yeah. you know i've got a number but, of the same but like i got a buddy max who was like hardcore into diablo 3 and he played that shit for a long time but like he played diablo 4 for a bit and has like since checked out like he played diablo 3 for years and he was a pretty casual player console player you know didn't have a high-end pc and, but he loved Diablo 3. Mm -hmm. But like Diablo 4, he just like just checked out, you know, within a month or two or however long it's been. It's sad that it seems like people are more excited for the new patch for Diablo 3 than to play Diablo 4 right now. It's yeah. insane. Well, hey, man, I mean nostalgia never goes out of style so no, you always you always got content if you want to go back to d1 or d2 i'll hop into a match with you on d2 man i'll, I'll just don't pick druid because i'll be i'll be druid okay no, don't steal my thunder i have to play barbarian I have yeah to. i know like you a, do it's requirement dual wield mm -hmm. we're gonna play on the hardest difficulty yep. i'm gonna abandon you and let you time. die and lose That's all right. your gold yep i'll complain about the whole time since the game sucks <laughs> thank god for diablo 3 <laughs> That's right, the real money auction house, I finally be able to play the game. <laughs> yep. Yeah, just put your credit card in your fucking computer and get the best items. Hey, I got, I got, I got like 200, 300 bucks off of that thing. I'm not complaining at all, okay?
Okay, hey, I was happy. That's. I'll be real for a second. Like, okay, it's pretty shitty for the game to have that overall. Yeah. But like you, you as like a real individual person before all this like Twitch really stuff. Nice for me. Yeah, I can imagine that just being like, like, a moment where you just raise your arm and you're just like, fuck yeah. I took. I actually all my made to, money. Yeah, I took all my friends to Panda Express and I paid for all their meals. And I'm like, guys. Oh my god, that must have been life. the best meal. <laughs> yeah. That must have been. The I remember it. It was a good fucking day. Well, he, okay, all right, all right. So, tomorrow the new Poe League comes out. Have you played Poe? I have not, but Ooh. I I will say that I was I was talking to Darth Microtransaction yeah. uh, one day, and uh, he told me to look at the skill tree for Path of Exile. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I just fucking like lost it. I was like, what? Do, do you what the fuck? Open? Yeah, look at that. Yes. So, so no, no, what is up. that? Whoa, hold up. You have to what understand. Is that? No, no, this is another one. What? No, what do you mean another one? That's what right. do you no. mean. There's literally another one. This is the so you no. you you were talking about the skill tree. This is the atlas tree, which is different. <laughs> and that doesn't count. My, like the, my mistake. Yeah. I apologize to everyone who is offended right now. Oh my god. Oh yeah. I mean, the thing is, like, I think PoE right now is, like, pretty much the best ARPG on the market if you want to play it very regularly. Like, there are some things that Diablo 2 does, or Diablo 4 does better. But, man, in terms of, like, raw gameplay and replayability, PoE is where it's at. So, here, here is a major question for yeah. PoE. When you open, like, the, the skill tree or the atlas tree, does it show you all of that? Oh, yeah, or do you just uh well you, okay, you, you scroll out and, and like also like it's so like for example this is actually not as complicated as you might think but the problem right is that but it, but visually it does look super complicated so if you're like a new player yes exactly yeah. like i'm sure i could i could learn the uh the the ropes of it i'm sure <laughs> i could pick it up really quickly or f relatively quickly but just like being a brand new player and just looking at that like there's a circle with like 15 symbols around it yes just like right in the middle somewhere yep you right know there. right below that yeah and i'm like oh my god yeah it's a it's a really good game it's super fucking fun but you're totally right that like i kind of wish that they could make it a little bit easier for people to like originally pick up like for example like these two like and there's like all these meta level techniques right so like for example this one right here is a tunnel over to here and like this is some other special thing and like there's like different strategies you use and some of these top ones like make the bosses stronger it's a lot to learn but the thing is with poe is that a person that has 2,000 hours has an advantage over a person who has 1,000 hours. And that's what you fucking expect, and that's what you want that's as a player that, like, in... Yup, yup, and that's exactly what you want as a player to put that, yeah. that puts that much time into it. However, as, like, a new player, it would... It's brutal. It would be... It would be a lot more digestible if, like, certain sections of it were just... You know, if it was limited a bit more and then you get enough points and then you open up certain tech trees and then it opens up more, kind of like a, yeah. a map, you know? Because when I look at that and I'm a new player and I haven't played the game, I'm like, Jesus, fuck. Well, it's so much, right? It's like homework at that point, right? Because like a build guide video, you can watch a 30 minute build guide video for PoE and there's no gameplay. That's it. It's you just know what, Asman? The the best way I have found to play RPGs is not with a build guide, but with a brain guide. Ooh, with PoE, you're gonna have a bad fucking time. I will persevere through it. Oh, I hope so. I tried doing that my first time. The funniest fucking thing is whenever PoE 1 came out, it was whenever Diablo 3 first came out and everybody hated Diablo 3. So everybody was saying about how PoE was amazing and Diablo 3 sucked. And now PoE 2 is coming out and everybody's talking about how PoE 2 is amazing and Diablo 4 sucks. It's literally the it exact is, same thing. It is thing. really funny. Yeah. It's it's also really funny because... Um, have you seen uh, Divinity Original Sin 2? I have been pressured to play that one as well. 
Oh my I god. Have not played it. Oh my I have god. Not, never played it. Uh, okay. Do uh, this is the reason I love talking to you cuz mm -hmm. you're like as big a fucking nerd as me, if not like twice as much. Divinity Original Sin 2 is so fucking good. But the thing that drew me to it is I saw a trailer for the game and I was like, "Oh my god, this looks like Diablo." Mhm. Mm and and uh, yeah, like it does have that and I didn't you. And I didn't really like Diablo 3 at the time. So I was like, oh my God, this looks like Diablo 3, but kind of like more what I'm interested in. And then I hop in and then I play it and it's like so fucking radically different. And it's just awesome. And, and you have so many options and it's kind of like what Baldur's Gate 3 is. It's that same level of like, you well, you can fucking do too, anything. Yep, yep, yep. And the funny thing about the whole... uh this is an unrealistic standard is that like they already mm -hmm. perfected the fundamentals in that game yeah so people people act like larian studios just popped out of the fucking ground like it's groundhog day they didn't they've been working on top-down rpgs since fucking like 1998. yeah it's like they've they were, done that they, and they also went bankrupt almost like two or three times they did they did how did you know that and that that's the point in my video oh yeah well i mean you i, I spent a lot of time on the fucking internet right and, i know you do homeboy people... that's why i like you dude yeah, that's why i go. like you i appreciate it i mean the thing is like i i think that like they they almost went bankrupt two or three times and there were times people didn't even know if they were going to have a job next week that's how bad it was but like, they stuck it out and they made it one of the crazy things i read is that they almost went they 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 basically made the uh the gamble mm -hmm. you know i don't know how many people like attack on titan i can't remember his name right now uh commander ervin you know they they made a commander ervin type gamble where it's like i've only seen season one it was in season one right the oh bald my gun, god right yeah, dude, this guy hasn't played Diablo 1 or 2. He hasn't watched a season 2, 3, or 4. Of... I'm sorry, Asmund. You you do as you will. You do uh -huh. as well. Anyways, this was a Commander Ervin type gamble where they, they basically put their entire company on the line and they weren't sacrificing quality. Like they almost, they would have been bankrupt if Divinity Original Sin, the first game, didn't sell well. Yeah. But they didn't cut corners on it, which I find is just so fucking respectable and that's why it's like it's so awesome that this company is getting all the respect praise and money that they so thoroughly deserve oh absolutely and also like everybody is going to use baldur's gate 3 as a frame of reference for what like you know for a fact the next triple a game that comes out with a battle pass day one dlc and like all these microtransactions you know they're going to get shit on so hard and, and like it's the same thing that happened after elden ring it's like why would somebody want to play something and it's good that like the reason why i was so happy about it is that it showed that there's like financial viability in making and delivering a solid good game exactly and you know that's kind of like in a, in a way how i've always looked at my channel is like if i just make good videos people will want to watch them like if i watch my own video and and i find myself laughing and entertained mm -hmm. then that's all that matters you know and i don't need to i don't need to try to make money in the same way that like blizzard Blizzard doesn't need to try to make money. If they just make a good game, then people will play it forever. You know, it's it's really not that hard, in my opinion. I don't think it's that hard either, but apparently it is. I mean, look at Warcraft 3 v 4 They couldn't even make a good old game. Oh my God, I mean, that dude, was just, that. It was sad. It was just fucking sad. I didn't even play it, man. I was going to go back and play it. I just saw how bad it was. I was like, no way. The worst part about it is that, like, the game that existed before, I don't know if you heard about this, but they replaced the client. I watched the grubby video about it, yeah. Yeah, they replaced the client, so they, di they didn't just make a bad replacement, they, they forced that replacement on the old game. Man, I can never think of them doing that. Dude, I, I was so fucking pissed. Yeah. Like... 
Oh my god, I could go on and on and on, but you know, there I'll say this, there are there's like a handful of moments in my life as like a video game consumer as just like a gamer. There's like a handful of moments where where I experience a new game and I'm like, holy shit, this is the fucking future. Like this is it. One of those was the first time I saw Oblivion, right? Yeah, Do you remember the that first like time you saw Oblivion? 2005, somewhere around there. Yeah, you remember that, and you were just like, "Oh, okay, fuck. This is the fu oh, this is it the was future." Fucking nuts, man! It was so good. I remember the first time I saw Warcraft Three gameplay after playing Warcraft Two mm -hmm. and Starcraft, which which looked like child's play. Warcraft I, I went was over insane for its time. It was. And I remember see like, you know, and at that point I thought it was just orcs and humans. And then I went over to my buddy's house and I see undead summoning ziggurats. And I'm like, oh yeah. Like my mind was blown. Like there there are very few moments, like at least in my lifetime as a huge fucking nerd where I'm like, dude, this is like the next level. This is it. Like Halo 3. Oblivion, Warcraft I feel Three, like Halo you know, Two was like such World a of Warcraft. massive step. Yeah, World of Warcraft. Yeah, was a yeah. huge one. Hey, hey, you want to hear some some interesting facts? What's that? I've got a I've got a hot take for you. Okay. You, you, you didn't play the first Diablo, but no. Diablo One revolutionized online gaming more than Halo Two. That is a fact. I think that you're probably right. I don't think Halo 2 revolutionized gaming at all. I think it just brought it to the mainstream. It brought it to the mainstream yeah. on console. Exactly. But Diablo 1 was the first Blizzard game to actually integrate Battle.net into the game itself. Whereas most games like Doom back in the day had uh -huh. a, a separate client. They had a separate server, like a website or something you had to go to and figure that shit out. Whereas the original Diablo, when it came out, it launched alongside Battle.net and you could load into multiplayer th through the game itself, as opposed to a separate service. Holy shit. I, I, yeah. I feel like you're right. People are saying CS 1.6, but I'm pretty sure Diablo predates CS well, 1.6. Uh, Di Diablo 1 was uh, like January, it, it, it was like December, December 31st, 1996. 1996. Yeah, it was, it was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, there Look it is. That. And let's see here. What was uh, 1.6? Yeah, let me see. Let's see. Let's see if I'm right. Yeah, yeah. That was like years later. That was after Diablo 2. Dude, dude. Uh, so, so part of this Diablo 1 review is that like, like Diablo 1's influence is so widespread that people don't even attribute it to the original source anymore. You know, so Diablo 1 doesn't get any of the props that it deserves for for some of the things in the modern gaming it's kind landscape. Of like how everybody uses like purple for epic and like the World of Warcraft tier of uh like rarity and it's just like assumed now of course purples are epic of course blue items are rare yeah you know, yeah of course exactly yeah yeah it's kind of like you know nobody talks about the first fucking street fighter game nobody talks about street fighter one nobody cares about that nobody's ever played it yeah i never hear about it ever but we wouldn't have street fighter 2 without it no yeah and it's important to know like where things come from i mean it's the same thing with like even the bad WoW expansions that are going to be like some positive things about them, of course, right? But like, uh, I just, like, I don't know. I feel like at this point, if Blizzard makes something good, if they make Diablo 4 better, I'll be happy. Like, I'm still trying to finish everything in Diablo 4, but I kind of stopped playing because it was just like, there were other things to play, you know? Did it feel like... Yeah. Did it feel like you were kind of wasting your time or like you didn't really know why things felt more time consuming than they should have been? Did you ever feel like that? I felt like, I mean, like sometimes I didn't, like for me, whenever I feel like I'm wasting my time playing a video game, I immediately stop playing it. Yep, like me as too. Soon, as soon as like I, I have like that, that break in my mind where it's like, okay, I'm no longer interested in this game. Like, I feel like I am reminded of the fact that I am playing a video game and I'm losing my time. I completely lose interest in it. Yeah, me too. Also, by the way, 
again, just let me know if you want to send me off on my way. No, it's all good. Yeah, you I'm know? getting ready to probably play a game or maybe watch one more thing. But, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't no, feel sure. bad about just okay. saying, like, because I know I'm on your stream. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. you know, just want to respect you is all. Yep. Have you seen this game Wayfinder at all? I don't think so. It looks like it's okay. Uh, I'm probably going to try it out at some point. Like, apparently they had, like, some microtransaction bullshit, so I don't really know exactly what to expect, but the combat and the gameplay looks okay. I'm just waiting, like, I don't know why we can't get a good MMO to come out that everybody plays. Well, that's all. how I was... Want. Did you play Wrath of the Lich King in Classic? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, well, all day, that every dumb day. question. Fucking dumb question. Yeah. I don't know why I asked that. Oh, I, I, I didn't so actually play it. I got to like 67 in Burning Crusade, and then me and my brother just kind of stopped playing for whatever reason. But how, how was that? Was it good? It was insane. It was like, you know what was so crazy about it? Is going back and like playing the game and then logging on every every quarterly earnings report and instead of blizzard announcing that they're losing subscribers everybody in trade chat is like spamming bro we just hit 9 million players we just hit 10 million players playing the game <laughs> and it was like dude it felt so fucking good it felt like you were at it ground felt... <laughs> zero it was amazing it felt like they make good games again. It felt like you were in it. And not only Yo, did you make wait. good games, but you were in the good game. You were playing wait. it. It was happening right I, now. I, I, I vaguely like, like, this is such a vivid memory. I mm -hmm. can't remember where you, where you said this, but I remember you saying this in a video. I was like this exact a thing. Video. I was watching a Nixium video and he talked about it and he reminded me of this. And I had not that you even would be in chat. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like people in the chat would be celebrating. Yeah. How many people were playing the game? Yep. Which is like the best fucking promotion any company could ever ask for. No, th the best promotion is whenever Fox or NBC does a special report on why your game is ruining children's lives. Because you game, you know yeah. what I found, Asman, is that. Every game that the Christians hate is always fucking awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, <laughs> if like, the Christians hate it, it's a certified banger. My mom did not let me buy Diablo 2 because she said, what the fuck are you thinking? It literally has him on the cover. I know, yeah. dude, but you should have been like, mom, I want to kill Satan. Yeah, she, I want to kill yeah, the she devil. Didn't buy that. I tried. I really oh, did. Yeah. Dude, I'm so sorry, man. I know it would have been a completely different world. I mean, it's uh, it's crazy to uh, to think. I mean, like the games that you grow up playing make such a big impact. Cause like you grew up playing Halo, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, and course. I would I would say the two like biggest things were Bungie and Blizzard. Mm -hmm. Like I I played Warcraft two and Starcraft before I ever yeah. touched Halo. Yeah, you know? I used to be a massive simp for for Bungie. Like, just the, the biggest fucking <sighs> simp. Like, I would buy their shirts. Didn't we all? Oh, yeah, it was so good. Like, Halo 3 was fucking insane. Like, even I thought Reach was pretty good. I, I, at that point, I was, like, already, like, really kind of addicted to WoW, so it didn't really happen that much. I didn't play it that much. But, like, Halo... Reach was really good. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, like, what is going on? Is Halo Infinite good now? I see Summit playing it every once in a while, <laughs> but I, I don't know why he's doing that. It... It, it depends here I, I do you want to see something cool yeah, that I have yeah, this is this is a one-of-a-kind okay relic <clears throat> what so the this... oh I can't show it on the stream but Ackman literally has a master chief helmet the Molnir helmet well it's uh, is that not Marty just O'Donnell? That. That is Marty O'Donnell Holy right fuck, there. You have a, a signed Master Chief helmet by Marty O'Donnell. That is Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief right there. Holy fuck. That is Jen Taylor, the voice of Cortana right there. Oh my God. And Asman. Yes. This is the best part. The rest of these signatures were signed in Bellevue on release night of halo 3 because i lived in that area what and, and one of my old one of my old friends gave me this helmet when when he got married right and he was like i gotta get rid of some things you know 
I, I know you do this YouTube channel, and I know you would appreciate this more oh than anybody. God. This is a one of a kind relic. Okay, that you can nuts. see this. You can see this. Let me see if I can. It might be reversed, but do you see the date right there? 92607. I think that was about the date of Halo, right? That was the release yeah, date of Halo 3. 3. Let me see if I can. If my, I can show my buddy walked into a random fucking pizza shop. Uh huh. Random fucking pizza shop after buying the Halo 3 Legendary Edition, and there was a bunch of Bungie members in there. And he was like, hey, you guys want to sign this? Some some Bungie member's wife signed this just what? for shits and giggles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check this oh out. Oh my god. I don't know if you can see it. It says, uh, okay, all Bungie wife, baby, right there. That is fucking hilarious. This is a one of a kind relic, dude. That is this is nuts. like did, did you did you see uh when XQC flexed his watch on H3H3? Get your bands up? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> bro, you don't want to fucking flex material goods on me, bro. Yeah. This is one of a kind, motherfucker. I mean, you want to flex that watch on me? That shit is fucking rare. Oh my god. It's not just rare, Asmin. It's one of a kind. It is. It actually is unironically one of a kind. Yeah. Unironically signed on release date of Halo 3 in the city that Halo 3 was released and, in. And but... Marty O'Donnell doesn't even work for Halo anymore, does he? Or Bungie. I got it signed. Yeah, I got it signed after the fact. I got it signed by him in 2017. Oh, wow. I'm Holy sorry shit, to man. derail the conversation from how awesome you are. No, you're good. By the way, you're good. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to probably watch one more video and then probably play a game before my chat mauls out about another stream of zero gameplay. <laughs> yeah, another one. <laughs> when do you think the Baldur's Gate 3 video is going to be out? Uh,. It needs to go out in two days. Oh, shit. Actually, no, tomorrow. Oh, wow. The 19th. Yeah, so we'll put that together real quick. You know, I, I'll, I'll say this. <laughs> so, a Asmin and I talked about this, about, like, reaction stuff. <laughs> I, I fucking love his reactions. Um, you can react to it on stream. I think just, like, wait four days before posting it to YouTube. Oh, I That's... got you, man. I got you. Dude, Absolutely. I... I, a lot of creators feel like it's like stealing views or whatnot. And, and sometimes maybe it is, but for me, it's like, I'm, I'm a very creative person and I just love watching people react live to it. I, I love seeing like your reaction and chat's reaction, you know, that just makes me happy. Just that to see that people are enjoying the videos and they find the jokes funny or they find the points compelling or they connect with me as like a hardcore blizzard fan or whatever like like i, I really don't give a shit about money at the end of the day it's just like uh, are people happy watching the videos that's what matters most to me i mean you know netflix just did a uh just did it they, they re-uploaded my stuff on the amber heard johnny depp trial thing on, no on a fucking yeah, way they they no fucking way did. yeah i don't even did know they, they actually email. yes they actually did and so, yeah, I know how it is. You got I do. <laughs> yeah, are you I mean, gonna copyright that? <laughs> well, I don't give a fuck. Who cares? What? I kind of want to watch that. Yeah, now, as long you're as people involved. are looking at me, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. So, as as far as like YouTube goes, yeah. you know, just like get, give the video itself on my channel to to like bloom and blossom and be a, a nice, beautiful flower. And then you and your chat, you can have the time of your life with it. You can react to any and every video I want. Just give it like, you know, a few days. Oh, I, I and, do. I do. I love, I love the videos, man. I think they are amazing. I know you do, dude. And like all the I, uh, react drama and everything. The one thing that I was thinking, I was like, man, I should go back and I should make videos so people can react to my fucking videos. You know, that's what it kind of made me feel like doing. It's like, I need to record more of my own fucking videos. Asmin, I, I will be straight up 100p with you right here, okay? If you depend too much on other people's content for your own content, mm -hmm. then you forget what it is to make videos. I remember I made a video. It was an 18-minute video of me running people over in Call of Duty Warzone with a truck. 
and I had more fun editing that video than I think I had fun streaming in a month. The thing is, the thing is, like, you have an especially rare gift that, like, you and Charlie Moist Critical share in the, in the fact that you can, like, turn the camera on, just record, and just talk. And, and like, 15 minutes later, the video is perfect, and it doesn't need any cuts or whatever. That is a rare gift. Oh, I fucking you know? wasted a lot of time figuring that out and fucking up. And the reason why I did that, by the way, I got really good at it, is just so I wouldn't have to, um, uh, I wouldn't have to edit. That's the reason why I got good right, at it. Right, but, but yeah. that's a good, like, when I record my shit, I, ha I have it scripted, kind of. I go ad-lib sometimes, and, but I make a lot of mistakes. Like, I always have to go back and cut the video, but the fact that, like, you know, I can watch some of your older videos when it's just you talking about life and stuff, and it's, and it's, like, completely uncut. I'm just like, how, how did he do this? If how makes, is he so real? If it makes you feel you know? better, let me see how many of the... Is, I, I don't do it all Don't in spoil one the secret. Don't spoil the secret. Okay, all right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I Just get it. let I me get believe. It right. I get it right on my first time, every single time. <laughs> I never mess it up, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I... Um, with all the React stuff going on, I was mm -hmm. kind of like... You know, so, sometimes people, when they get uh, maybe too successful, quote unquote, and, and like a lot of their success is reliant on other people and watching their content, they forget what it is to make their own content. And like, I thought about with that with XQC, like there's a, there's a stream slash video he did where he just went to the gym and worked out. Mm -hmm. And it's like the most wholesome fucking thing you've ever seen. Did you watch the dude the is, skate park? I, I didn't watch that, but okay, when he but went to the gym and he and he looks like a twig, yeah. but you know what? Like, absolutely 100% respect mm -hmm. for, for even posting that, you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. And, right. uh, and like, the thing is, that kind of stuff feels so good to do. And it is so fun to make videos. I, I, I used to love making videos. I wish... Uh, I'm going to start trying dude, to do more of them, man. Fucking really do to. it. Do yeah. it. People will watch whatever the fuck you put out there, man. Well, thank you. Yeah. I they mean, absolutely will. Right, chat? Am I right? Well, they Press fucking F in the do. chat if I'm right. They Press fucking, F in the chat if I'm right. I can't believe it. I can't believe they do that. Yeah, yep, no, I know yep, I need to yep, make more Look videos. at that. Look at that universal praise in chat. Mm -hmm. You are so lucky, man. You, you have limitless creative potential. And I just, I'd love to see whatever the fuck you make on your own. Well, you know, I, I love the reaction videos, and I and I love like everything else you post. But sometimes, like those videos where it's just you, just yeah. you, You're talking just talking about some shit. Yeah. Yep. The like, you know, there's there's some trees in the background and fucking nothing else. It's magical. Yeah, because it, it, it's authentic, right? It's personal. It's real. It's so real. Yeah, it's raw. it's like. It's like you're not being like, oh, here's my $600,000 watch. I'm a big fucking deal, bro. No, you're just a guy, you know? Yeah, no, I get it, man. I get it. And I, I do need to do it, man. I just... Yeah. I go back and I watch some of these videos that I've made over the years, and they're so good. I just... I, I, I need to make more of these. These are so funny. These are so well fun. Yeah, and if it and, and if it makes you happy and if yeah. it makes you content and satisfied, then absolutely fucking do it, man. Yeah. Because I, I, again, kick me out mm -hmm. whenever you want. Just say get out of here, act man. Uh -huh. I'm I'm streaming. Okay. By the way. Yeah. Don't want to intrude. I'm just saying, like, dude, people love you for you, and you don't need to like watch someone else's content or play a game you can just talk about honestly whatever the fuck you want i know sometimes and... i just spend the first hour of my stream ranting yeah, yeah. No, i know i've been doing People that for it. actually kind of a while that's like part of the stream that's like part of the normal stream the stream culture etc i get it no it works very well too well look all right fine i will kick you out what's your fucking twitch <laughs> name what's your twitch name twitch? i'm gonna get everybody to follow you <laughs> the acting male, I fucked okay. up. I had the act man Twitch account 
and then I forgot the password. So it's the acting male. Do you want me to help you Thank get the you. account back? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that would do, but we can we can talk about that. I appreciate that. Okay. I really do. I really appreciate yeah. that. Uh, just now, and, do something. and hey, if you want to play Diablo 2 sometime, okay. this guy right here, I'll carry you through it, man. Don't worry, chat. I'll make sure he doesn't look like a goofball. I'll make sure he beats Andario first try. He he won't be caught off guard by Duriel. He doesn't even know who the fuck that guy is. Yep. All right. Oh, I do. I'll make Remember sure. I the campaign in Diablo 4. He's <laughs> yeah. This guy, th he thinks he knows who Duriel is, bro. He thinks he knows Duriel. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. I'll, right, I'll leave you be. I'll stop bothering you, man. <laughs> All right, dude. Good well, chatting to you. Thanks for the video, and uh, thanks for the chat. I'll see you later, man. Yeah, I'll give you any other video you want. All Peace. Right, Peace, man. See ya. <laughs> Bro, I, I had so much fun editing this shit. I really did. Like, this was the funniest fucking shit I had done in such a long time. But I have thought about that a lot recently. With like making my own videos, doing uh, doing videos more back, you know, like back the way I used to do them.